The human nervous system can be divided into two divisions. We have the central nervous system or the CNS and the peripheral nervous system or the PNS. Now the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord and the only type of neurons found in the central nervous system are interneurons. Now on the other hand the peripheral nervous system consists of everything else of everything outside of the brain and the spinal cord and it does not contain any interneurons the only type of neurons this system contains are motor neurons and sensory neurons and we'll see what those are in just a moment now we can subdivide the peripheral nervous system into the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Now within the autonomic nervous system we have special type of motor and sensory neurons known as preganglionic neurons and postganglionic neurons. Now the autonomic system can be divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system. Now, in the next several lectures, we're going to basically discuss the details and the functionality of each one of these systems individually. In this lecture, we're going to focus on a terminology that we're going to need to know that we're going to come across in our discussion on the human nervous system. So let's discuss and define what a, mo uh, what a motor neuron is, what a sensory neuron is, what an interneuron is, let's define what the new and the ganglia is with respect to our nervous system. Let's discuss preganglionic and postganglionic neurons, and then let's focus on a simple reflex arc. So let's begin with defining what a motor neuron is. A motor neuron is basically a neuron that begins within the central nervous system and then extends into the peripheral nervous system and it basically carries an electric signal to some type of target cell. Usually the target could be an organ, it could be a gland, it could be a muscle and so forth. And because that target is usually known as an effector, so the organ that our motor neuron is trying to send that signal too is known as our effector and that's exactly why sometimes the motor neurons are also known as efferent neurons. So basically these two terms are synonymous, they are used interchangeably. So we said that motor neurons basically exit our nervous system. Now when they exit the spinal cord, motor neurons exit from the front side of the spinal cord and the front side is also known as the ventral side. So if this is the cross-sectional area of the spinal cord, then this is the front side, it's the ventral side, and this is where the motor neuron will leave. So let's move on to the sensory neuron. So what exactly is a sensory neuron? A sensory neuron is basically the neuron that begins at some receptor. It receives a signal from the environment and then it sends that signal into the central nervous system. So uh, sensory neurons are neurons that receive electrical signals from receptors and carry those to other neurons or to the central nervous system. Now sensory neurons are also known as afferent neurons. So notice that we have an E here and we have an A here. So afferent neuron basically means it carries it away from that receptor. So these types of neurons enter our spinal cord from the back side and that means from the dorsal side. So dorsal means from the back of our spinal cord. Now what about interneurons? Well interneurons are basically simply those neurons that connect other neurons to one another. For example we can have an interneuron that connects a sensory to a motor neuron as we'll see in just a moment in our example of the simple reflex arc. Now let's define what a nucleus is with respect to the nervous system. So the nucleus here doesn't actually refer to the individual nucleus inside the cell body of our nu uh, nu uh, neuron. So the nucleus refers to a collection of many neurons of many cell bodies 
found within the central nervous system. On the other hand, if we are examining a collection or a group of cell bodies, a group of neurons inside the peripheral nervous system, this is known as a ganglia. So ganglia are those cells inside our peripheral nervous system and nucleus refers to our groups of neurons inside the central nervous system. Now, what about the preganglionic neuron and the postganglionic neuron? So, these are the two types of neurons that exist within the autonomic nervous system. So, in the autonomic division of the peripheral nervous system, the neurons that begin at the central nervous system, the brain or the spinal cord, and extend into the ganglia of our peripheral nervous system, remember the ganglia are simply the groups of cell bodies found inside the peripheral nervous system, these types of cells are known as preganglionic neurons. So preganglionic neurons begin in the central nervous system and extend into the peripheral nervous system. So this is basically a type of motor neuron. Now, what about postganglionic neurons? Well, postganglionic neurons are simply those neurons that synapse that connect to our preganglionic neuron. So the preganglionic neuron begins at the central nervous system, it extends into the peripheral nervous system, and then it connects with the postganglionic neuron. And the postganglionic neuron then carries that electric signal to some type of target organ or target cell, known as our effector or effector organ. So the postganglionic neurons are the cells that synapse or connect with the preganglionic neurons coming from the central nervous system and this takes place within the autonomic division of the peripheral nervous system. So postganglionic cells carry those electric signals and extend to the effector organ, whatever it might be. It could be a muscle, it could be some type of organ, it could be a tissue and so forth. So uh, let's take a look at the following simple reflex arc and let's follow our electric signal as it begins on one part of the body and ascends somewhere else. So let's suppose we take our finger and we pinch or we uh, take a prick and we prick our finger and let's see what happens. So on our finger, let's say we apply pressure, we have specific types of receptors, pressure receptors that basically uh, take that pressure and create and transform that pressure into an electrical signal. And that electrical signal is picked up by the sensory neuron. Remember, the sensory neuron is our neuron known as the afferent neuron that picks up the signal that comes from the environment by that receptor and sends it into the central nervous system. So this is our spinal cord. Now, the spinal cord has a back side, the dorsal side, it has a front side, the ventral side. And remember, sensory neurons basically pick up that signal and enter our spinal cord from the back side, so from the dorsal side. So the electric signal is carried through the axon and eventually ends up in this region. So this inner region is our gray matter. This outer region shown here is our white matter. So the neurons here are myelinated. The neurons inside the gray matter are not myelinated. So we have our um, axon terminal is found right here. Now this section here is an interneuron. Remember inside our central nervous system and the central nervous system is basically the spinal cord and the brain. So inside the spinal cord, we only have individual interneurons. And so we have this interneuron that connects our sensory to our motor neuron. 
So once the electric signal is transmitted into the interneuron, it travels and eventually it synapses with the motor neuron. Now the motor neuron once again begins in the central nervous system. So it begins in a spinal cord and it leaves the spinal cord from the front side, from the ventral side. And that's exactly why it leaves from the ventral side in this diagram and travels and it carries that electric signal back to some effector organ. So this is where the signal arrives and this is where the signal is received by that receptor. So we have sensory neuron, we have the interneuron and we have this motor neuron. So this is a simple reflex arc. So in the next several lectures, we're going to discuss the individual functionality of each one of these systems in detail.